thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Akash, uh, uh, and I will be uh, moderating the uh, webinar for you today. Let me introduce you to our panelists. We have my friend Ov from uh, Arcus Store, who will be uh, taking you through the product offerings of Arcus Store. Uh, uh, thank you, Ov, for joining us. I'm glad. I'm glad for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. And we have uh, Rajesh uh, from Seagate Technologies who will be telling us about the Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives and a very, very unique feature on NAS drives, which does, doesn't exist with uh, with any other brand, which is the rescue uh, services. Uh, a very interesting presentation. Thank you for uh, thank you, Rajesh, for joining us. Okay, so let's start. I have uh, a very small presentation for you first to start with, which is going to show you about the um, some of the very interesting trends around data. Now, I'm sure every single webinar that you go to, every single report that you uh, that you read or hear, tells you about the data explosion, tells you about the growth that data will have, and it's uh, it's no secret. You don't need to be a genius to know that this is going to increase. But uh, there's one area in particular where the growth is actually going to take place. All the data growth is actually taking place in unstructured data, and uh, depending on which a study you read um, and which statistics you see, um, they put the estimate of the unstructured data anywhere between 80 to 85 percent. And the growth of data is also huge. Uh, from uh, 60 zettabyte of today, it's going to grow to 175 zettabyte in 2025. Now, why I'm telling you all this is because when the data grows, there are some challenges that come with the data, especially on the un unstructured data. Uh, unstructured data is all the data that is not structured, that doesn't have, uh, that that doesn't exist in the form of a database or a relational database where the, the the relation exists between different data. So it's very difficult to analyze it. It's difficult to index it. It's difficult to extract any sort of metadata into it. And there is a whole industry that exists um, only for content discovery. Um, but before you are able to do anything on that data, before you are able to analyze the data, the very first and basic challenge is to store that data and to protect that data. That's where we, we come in, right? So where exactly does NAS fit in this growth of unstructured data? NAS um, on all the studies tell us that NAS is going to be the highest growing segment among all the storage devices. And I would like to tell you why is that. In the consumer storage market, NAS is going to grow very exponentially um, at the cost of all the external direct attached storage devices, which means all the flash drives that you see around, all the external hard drives that you see around um, are not going to be able to satisfy the storage needs of the consumer. Um, also, they cannot be shared, they cannot be uh, connected to the clouds, uh, um, and they cannot be protected by RAID. And of course, they cannot be scaled up as well. Um, all these facts are going to push a lot of consumers towards NAS. So in the consumer storage market, network attached storage is going to grow. SMB storage market has traditionally been a NAS market and it will continue to be so. So you will see growth there. Enterprise storage market is going to be um, uh, shared between uh, NAS, SAN, tapes, and some uh, novel solutions like RAM disk, if the prices fall down on RAM disk, and uh, software uh, defined storage as well. So it's all till 2025, all the industry says that it's all growth. So if you are into NAS business, you are in the right business. But I would also like to assure you that NAS business is not a static business. So today, if you get into NAS, it's not that it's going to, um, it's going to stagnate, okay? Uh, the industry is moving and we have a lot of new technologies um, which will be exploited by NAS in future. Um, and these are some of the key technologies that, that the future NASes will evolve around. And I would like to very quickly show you these, and this will be my last slide. Um, one is that um, the bandwidth requirement as it's going up today, it's very common to see the consumer NAS with the 1G and 2.5G network connection, and enterprise exists with 10G connection, but this is going to be pushed to 40G and beyond. Uh, some NASes will come out with Thunderbolt interface to satisfy the, the, the need of um, those who want to directly connect it and edit high storage uh, videos. And there will be some overlap with the SAN, with the SAS and FC connectivity also in the interfaces. On the SSD front, today, most of the NASes that you sell, um, SSDs are predominantly used either as a cache or as a hot volume. But this is going to change with U.2 because um, with NVMe, you have the 
limited capacities with 2.5 inch SaaS and SATA, you don't have the kind of bandwidth that you need. So the new format U.2 is going to change a lot and you will see a lot of Nessus coming out with U.2 in future. And of course, there are some um, storage technologies like Hammer and Mammer, uh, which are the energy assisted recording, which are pushing hard drives limit. So we already have a 20 TB um, hard drive uh, and very soon this is going to be 30 TB uh, before the end of the year. We are going to have the multi-actuator multi drives coming up, which will have a higher speed because they will have the two actuators. Computational storage is a very, very interesting concept, though it is still is a, is a novel concept and very few companies have come up with this. And so is the um, SCM or the persistent memory, uh, the storage class memory. These are some of the novel concepts that uh, Nessus will draw from. So what I would like to promise you is if you are in the storage business, then you will see a very high growth for Nest. If you're not in the storage business or if you're not doing any NAS solutions right now, this is a time um, for the system integrators, for the enterprise solution providers, and for the uh, for the end users also to see uh, uh, where they can benefit from NAS. That concludes my presentation, but um, I would like to ask a quiz, as I promised. Uh, please answer this in the, in the chat box, and the one who answers the right one first will uh, win a gift voucher from care for 400 dirhams. Okay, the question is, which of these storage devices uh, users will migrate to NAS in majority? Is it the SAN users who will be migrating to NAS? Is it the external DAS storage users or the tape drive users or the public cloud, cloud users? Who would be um, migrating to Mr. Vinod Nair says DAS storage? Uh, Mr. Eric also is correct. Uh, okay, so it's Mr. Vinod. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Nadim Siddiq is also, oh, yeah, okay. Yes, thank you for, uh, okay, Dash, Mr. Zishan is also correct. So Mr. Vinod Nair um, answered the first at 12.07. Mr. Samir Shahid, external Dash storage, you are right, Mr. Samir. Mr. Zishan, you are right. Mr. Nadim, you are right. Mr. Shabir Ahmad, you are also right. Payal, you are right. Um, Eric Martin, you are correct. Um, the winner for this one is uh, Mr. Vinod Nair, and I'll be reaching out to you, Mr. Vinod Nair, after the uh, webinar uh, to deliver your uh, your gift. So yes, uh, uh, the correct answer is that the external Dash storage users will be migrating to NAS in majority. Um, some of the tape drive users might migrate to NAS in SMB, but uh, that number is not going to be significant. Some of the public cloud users also might shift to NAS because um, NAS gives you a much better security and uh, a recent example is when Google Photos uh, goes from free to a paid module, a lot of Google Photos users, uh, which is typically a public cloud, will uh, flock to NAS. But then again, we don't expect that number to be huge. The highest number is going to be the external desk storage users who will come to NAS. Um, with that, I would like to ask um, Ov to, um, to take it forward and uh, show us what the access store product line is. Ov. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Uh, no, not yet. I think it will take a minute. Uh, okay. No, it doesn't show yet. Okay. Yes, it has started screen sharing. So yes, okay. we see it now. Okay, you see the presentation, not my notes, right? Uh, I see your notes as well. You can. Uh, okay, uh, then uh, yeah. let me let me change that. Okay, now it should be correct. Now this is fine. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Akash and DataCare, for this great opportunity today. Um, I'm I'm very excited about having this webinar with DataCare and Seagate. Uh, our trusted partners in UAE and the whole Middle East. This is Ove Brinkman speaking. I'm the sales and marketing manager in charge of UAE, uh, Middle East, as well as Africa region. Uh, I will give you a quick introduction into Asus Store, our benefits, and for the first time ever on this whole planet, um, a first glimpse at our newest upcoming NAS models. Um, <clears throat> Asusto was founded in 2011, and this year we'll, we will be celebrating our 10th anniversary. Um, our headquarter is located at Taipei, Taiwan, close to the headquarter of ASUS, 
uh, our mother company where I am currently located. The ASUS the brand name was created as a combination of ASUS and storage. Let's talk about the benefits of ASUS Store NAS. There are many NAS brands out there, so why should a customer choose ASUS Store? The answer is uh, pretty easy. Uh, we think our customers, um, we think our, we think of our customers' needs first and design our NAS accordingly. So, what characteristics do people usually want to have in a NAS? It's mainly three things. Uh, they want the NAS to be fast, simple, and reliable. So let's talk about fast first. We are part of the ASUS International brand, which means we are able to use superior components. We incorporate ASUS mainboards as well as Intel processors uh, in our recent NAS systems. ASUS was the first NAS manufacturer ever to install 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports into the NAS, and it's becoming our trademark as you will see. When it comes to speed, uh, fast and slow is relative. The most frequently used port without question is still the one GBE port, but with the ever-growing amount of data, an alternative is on the rise. Here, Asistor has started in 2019 as the first NAS manufacturer ever to implement 2.5 GBE uh, technology in the NAS Nimbus D series. Of course, we also have a NAS tower with 10 GBE features, but the 10 GBE environment is still relatively expensive. Therefore, um, we came up with a solution that is faster than one GBE, but still affordable for consumers. And we got rewarded for it. Our Nimister series is up until now our most successful series uh, and got awarded many times, like by PC Mag. And US based online magazine, um, they awarded us the Editor's Choice Award in 2019. Uh, the series is still listed in 2020 and recently in 2021 for our uh, new series, the Lockerster 2 and 4 series. We also received the Edit Editor's Choice Awards. All of these units uh, come with a 2.5 GBE port uh, pre installed. Um, but this is one, uh, it's only one of many awards and uh, positive feedbacks we've gained from all over the world. Since we released our first NAS in 2012, we have over 800, 800 professional reviews up until now, and we keep on counting. Let's talk about simple. People nowadays have enough complexity in their life. We want to simplify things for our customers and make them feel comfortable using our products. Asister is known for having a very user-friendly interface software. Uh, it's just a screenshot, but you can see um, it basically reminds you of uh, any modern uh, smartphone interface, uh, let it be Apple uh, or any other manufacturer. So customers are used to this kind of interface from the very first second they use it. We were the first NAS brand to introduce uh, the, this uh, layout that I just spoke about. It's very well structured and can be used with any kind of computer and browser. Mm, the user interface automatically adjusts itself based on the screen resolution. Uh, apps can be sorted and stored into groups. Um, the position of apps can be saved so they don't move all the time. Um, so in general, it's basically just like a, a tablet user interface. It's very easy to use and very suitable for those um, who are using NAS for the very first time. Besides the desktop version, we also offer many phone applications, which will let you log into your NAS so you can access all your data, photos, music, everywhere and every time. Uh, so now does everybody um, has a smartphone, but Still many people struggle to fit in the data into their smartphone itself. Um, let it be the videos, photos, or music, um, since the phone has a limited storage in general. Mm, or sometimes all the data is gone um, just because you you're, using your, uh, you're losing your phone. So a NAS can be a great addition to save the phone's data in a secure place. All you need is internet, basically. Let's talk about reliability. Uh, when talking about reliability, users want to use uh, products 
as long as possible. That is why um, ISOSTORE offers a three years warranty for all of our NAS. Doesn't matter if it's the entry level or is it the high end level, it's at least three years warranty on the whole hardware. And we even offer a five year warranty included in the purchase price uh, for our new Lockerster Pro series. In the event that the ASISTER NAS stop working or you are deciding to get an upgrade, we designed a solution to make the transition as convenient as possible. It's a unique feature that is only available with ASISTER. It's called system migration. Uh, whenever a NAS unit fails or you want to upgrade to another model, you can just plug out your hard drives and plug them into the new NAS with no data loss or any other annoying process. And this works for all of our NAS systems. So you have an entry level NAS and you want to upgrade to, um, for a prosumer, you had two base to begin with and now you are buying a new ASISTER NAS uh, medium range with four base or even eight base. You can just pluck out those two base uh, from the first NAS and pluck them into the second and uh, you can just start using them immediately. It also works the other way around, by the way. So if you have um, a four bay NAS, uh, but you're actually only using two bays, and now you want to buy a two bay NAS, uh, maybe better specs, uh, but still only two bays, you can just plug them out um, from the old NAS and plug them into the new NAS. <clears throat> Let's move to our product introduction. Um, first, a little bit about our naming system. The first, uh, the AS stands for ASISTER. The first two digits um, for the series name and the higher the number, the better the specs. So our naming starts at AS10, the 10 series with the lowest specs and currently ends at 71. The second two digits uh, represent the amount of base. And the T stands for tower and the R stands for rack mount. Uh, we have RS and RD. Uh, RS stands for a single power unit and D stands for dual power. Uh, we have various, various NAS series built for your different needs from home user to SMB users. Uh, in the very bottom, you can see our uh, newest NAS that have not been released yet. I will talk about that a little later on. Um, the medium range right now, predominant our Nimbus Dosser series, AS52 and AS53, as well as our new AS66 series, which was released in July last year. Um, all of them with 2.5 GBE. My bad. Um, right now we have a family of NAS is one big series is called the Locker Store series. Uh, I just mentioned the Locker Store two and four. You can see in the bottom right is our newest NAS and completed are those by the Locker Store eight and 10, Locker Store 10 Pro as well as Lockerstore 12R Pro and Lockerstore 16R Pro. Um, this is called the Lockerstore family because they have um, a lot of specs in common. They all come with the latest Intel quad core CPUs. They all have pre-installed 2.5 uh, gigabit ethernet. They all come with pre-installed uh, M.2 NVMe slots. They have expandable DDR4. Uh, as well as uh, secure drives, and they all come with a metal chassis. So far to our product introduction, let's move on to a case study. Um, so how can you actually use the NAS? So we have the first success story, uh, which is a customer of ours. They moved to Taiwan in the late 80s. Um, and 
they are pretty successful all over the world. They are the second largest retail group of the world. So when they came to Taiwan, they up until now, they were able to build 70 stores across Taiwan and they have a decentralized IT structure. Um, also, the headquarter and the branch stores have individual server rooms and host servers. So this is the challenge that we had to solve. And our solution was um, we were using our red mount models and use them as a secondary backup for the host service that they had pre-installed. And those red mount NAS are able to be accessed by 20 to 30 clients. And for their uh, local stores, they chose our uh, two series um, for individual work uh, units and in their departments for file sharing as well as backup. So right now they are using more than 100 NAS uh, from ISIS store and we haven't heard the complaint since. Uh, I have a second success story as well. This one is from an American roofing company. Uh, their challenge is that their headquarter, that their office um, is far away from the actual construction site, sometimes a two or three hour drive. And um, they don't want to spend all the time uh, driving from A to B and back to A just because they forget some uh, documents or they need some feedback uh, from the engineers or the architects uh, from ever where are, either in the office or the construction site itself. Um, so they need to be able to send data and access the access data from within the office, but also from the remote area wherever they are. So our solution was our uh, Nimbus store, uh, our AS5102T, and they're using it as a data center in a RAID 1. Uh, with this one, they have remote access to all of their data through our AI data mobile app, which, can everybody, which everybody can use on their phone. Um, so the shared data can be accessed in the office and on the construction site itself in no time and um, just communication is easier in general. One of the uh, biggest issues of 2020 as well as 2021 is working from home. Also here NAS is, an, is a brilliant uh, way of solving this issue if you don't want uh, anybody to work in the office or to minimize the contact in between your office workers. Uh, you can install the NAS inside the office uh, and everybody at home uh, is able to log into the office NAS from their uh, mobile gadget, from their computer, from their laptop, from their uh, tablet, from home. Um, this can be safe through our uh, VPN services and one NAS can be accessed or can store up to more than 4,000 individual accounts and you can have up to 512 shared folders. Um, you can also limit the access to those uh, folders. So if only the president and the secretary, uh, for example, are allowed to see certain data, you can make this folder only accessible for those two. If all of your sales team needs to have access to sales data, um, you can make one folder for them. And like this, it's really easy um, to have access over your data wherever you are and also who can see those. None of the presented cases would work without the help of a reliable hard drive solution. Uh, luckily, the guys and girls over at Seagate are doing a fantastic job and are providing us with everything our NAS need. Uh, everything between 240 uh, gigabits and 18 terabyte storage is supported. Um, more than 35 options are available for our Nimbus series, for example. If you choose an older series, even more um, is supported. Um, and because they are so reliable, Seagate's drives are preferred, are our preferred drives whenever our development team is designing a new NAS, which is bringing us to our final chapter today which is 
uh, uh, another product introduction. Our newest uh, NAS that are on the horizon. Uh, the first one is the Drive Store 2 and the Drive Store 4. This will be a new series uh, that we are going to release uh, somewhere around May, maybe June. Um, you're the first one ever to hear about this. Um, this will be our lowest um, entry level NAS, um, but still it will be available with 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Uh, you will not find this with any other manufacturer uh, in this price class for sure. And the second introduction that I'm going to do is the Drive Store 2 Pro and the Drive Store 4 Pro. These are going to be going to uh, be introduced to the Taiwanese market uh, in two weeks. So they will be available in Middle East a little bit later. And here I can already share you our specs. Uh, they will come with a real tech uh, quad core 1.4 uh, CPU as well as two gigabyte uh, GB of RAM. Um, 2.5 inch as well as 3.5 inch uh, hard drives uh, will be supported. Uh, like previously, the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port uh, is pre installed. Um, we will also, um, you will also be able to enjoy uh, streaming through the NAS in 4K quality, um, which you uh, most likely not to see in this quality with another manufacturer as well. Uh, 2.5 uh, gigabit ethernet and a tool free installation. Um, yeah, this is all from my side. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of the uh, presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. Unless Akash, we have a question section in the end. Uh, yes, we have a question and answer round also in the end, but um, in okay. case anybody has any questions, they can always ask in the chat, yes. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. Uh, I'm especially, uh, uh, okay, first let me yeah. put the quiz yeah. uh, as I promised. Okay. So thank you, Obey. Uh, here's the quiz. Uh, if you have been uh, paying attention to Obey's presentation, you will be able to crack it very quickly. Again, uh, type your answer in the in the chat box. Uh, whoever uh, uh, gives the answer first will win the voucher. So the question is, uh, Pile Shash has 10 GB network connectivity. Uh, no, uh, uh, Pile, the question is, what feature does Asus Store NAS does not have? Uh, Mr. Eric has he, okay. Mr. Nadim has G, okay. Venkata has G, all right. Okay, so the question is, um, what is it that Asus Store does not have? Do, do we not have a 10G network connectivity? Or do we not have a rate protection to protect against a hard drive failure? Or do we not have a snapshot protection to protect you uh, from uh, file changes and ransomware? Or do we not have a NAS which comes pre-populated with the hard drives? So the correct answer is D. And the first one to get it right is Mr. Nadim. Mr. Venkata, you are correct. Mr. Velu, you are correct as well. Uh, Mr. Shamir Shahid is correct. Mr. Zishan is correct. Mr. Surendra Pujari is correct. A lot of you got it correct. Um, but the first one you got it correct uh, is, uh, uh, is Mr. Nadim. So Mr. Nadim, I'll be reaching out to you. Um, and I would like to ask now Rajesh to, uh, to present his solution on the hard drives. So as I said, uh, Archive Store doesn't have a NAS pre-populated with drives. So as Ove told you, uh, you need to have a very reliable partner uh, when when it comes to um, comes to hard drives. So a NAS purchase always has two components. You need to decide on the NAS itself, and once you have decided on which brand of NAS and which model of NAS you want to go with, you need to decide on the hard drive. Um, a great brand of hard drives is Seagate, especially with the inclusion of their rescue data recovery. We always recommend Iron Wolf, and I would like to ask Rajesh now to take this presentation forward. Uh, Rajesh, uh, thank you, Akash. A pleasure to be uh, here and thank you for the opportunity you have given. Sorry for the bad uh, video quality of my embedded laptop uh, webcam. Uh, and uh, also thank you, uh, Mr. Brinkman, uh, for uh, uh, collaborating with Seagate. And I'm absolutely certain this is just the 
start of an excellent relationship that we will have uh, excellent products from your end. And uh, as is evident from uh, even Seagate website, we uh, highly recommend as a store and I'm really excited towards this uh, partnership. So I'll just take probably a few seconds to uh, share the screen if I can. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, we see the screen, just uh, not in the slideshow mode yet. It should work now, right? Yes, this is perfect now. Okay, um, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for your time. And also thank you, uh, Assistor, for uh, the collaboration, as I mentioned. And thank you, um, uh, Ove for, um, uh, I mean, recognizing Seagate to work very closely with uh, the wonderful Assisto drives. Um, so as I begin, and I think uh, Akash had uh, already highlighted uh, the, uh, the presence of data that's going to be almost close to 175 zettabytes of uh, storage that's going to be, I mean, data that's going to be created and we need to find ways to store them. And uh, we are probably just at around uh, 50 or zettabytes already as we speak. And so obviously uh, there are many questions that come in the mind of all our customers is that some say the probably the SSD is going to take over HDD or uh, the SDD is going to completely go out of fashion. Uh, well, uh, partly uh, maybe the customers are right, but what our responsibility is to educate or highlight or inform that with all that humongous data of 175 zettabytes being created, uh, still uh, based on the research of IDC, by the way, this is an IDC uh, report that we got, is close to 60% will still continue to be hard disk drives and they will continue so. And there's many more years, uh, you can see the innings from uh, hard disk drives. SSDs are certainly growing, but probably their application or their advantage of SSDs will be mainly for uh, cache memories and uh, probably hot data, as uh, Akash mentioned. And uh, if you see the if you see the summary of all that is we are almost currently clocking uh, close to 30% and higher in the real time data growth. So from that perspective, what is uh, so how are how is Seagate being ready to uh, access that amount of data structured or unstructured. So uh, we, we at the background invest uh, uh, billions of dollars in R&D. We always were one step ahead of our competition. And uh, we are also glad to tell you that we have a technology which can take care of all the data, huge loads of data that's been created. And we call that as the hammer technology. Now hammer, if we break it down, it means heat assisted uh, magnetic recording. Now, basically what uh, the heat assisted magnetic recording means as it is very evident from the description is uh, the media, the platter that we have where everybody records their data uh, has a certain level of aerial density and we cannot really maximize that level of aerial, aerial density into the platter. But Seagate uh, created an innovative uh, technology which is using the element of heat. And as you know, heat has got the inherent quality of softening the medium on which it falls. So what we currently use is that the heat which is created from the actuator is beamed onto the platter and it softens the platter and hence the aerial density is, is uh, increased and uh, we can pack more data per square inch. And just for some who probably would want to know what aerial density means is basically the data per square inch. The higher the data per square inch, the more is the capacity uh, that drive can hold. So, uh, so as I've explained to you that with higher, uh, higher aerial density, we will soon have, and I'm very happy to say that we have already started test marketing as we speak uh, in some uh, key countries, uh, almost uh, 20 terabytes of uh, hard drives have already been test marketed. And very soon it's, it's going to be at your doorstep. We will have capacities of 20, 30, 40 terabytes of hard drives, which will uh, probably have a lower total cost of ownership. And uh, there will be no more compromises in terms of the input output operations per second. And your data reliability, the speed of accessing data, the speed of writing data will absolutely be super fast and it will not compromise any of these things. And that is what Seagate Hammer technology is all about. The second thing is, as you have known that with the 20, 30, 40 terabytes of data 
that can be written onto a hard disk drives, it certainly is going to put a lot of pressure on those magnetic heads, which are basically accessing the data and will have to write and read uh, onto the platters at the same time. So can one single actuator do it? It's not, it's not easy at all. And so Seagate created the second innovative technology, which we call as the multi-actuator technology, wherein, as you can see in the image, it has got a dual head. Uh, one head is for writing and one, uh, very simply put, one head is for writing and another head is for reading. So what this basically does is that it multiple, it kind of uh, quadruples the, I, the IOPS uh, into, the, into the platter, and that gives even a faster access of reading and writing data. And of course, their latency is extremely low. And uh, of course, at the end of the day, you have the maximum utilization of the hard drives that you currently buy. So the hammer technology and the multi actuator technology of Seagate are, uh, are already available, and we are ready to uh, grab all that storage that we are going to be creating uh, very soon. Now, jumping into the product, uh, product perspective of uh, Seagate, uh, it's very important to understand, I'm sure this is not anything new to you guys, is that we need to understand who are the NAS users. And uh, thanks to COVID, uh, the, the bright side which, which emerged is that the home users have been the greatest uh, ben uh, benefactor of the, uh, the NAS devices. So obviously uh, you had offices closed, so people had still had to work from home. They needed a server. They, uh, so obviously the most cost-effective server could be a NAS server when, high, as highlighted by Akash at the beginning, this really helped to connect uh, to the main servers. You did not need to have any IT, special IT professionals to be able to access to the data. However, uh, along with the home users, we always had the creative professionals, basically the people who are in the news broadcasting uh, industry or those who are in uh, the, the industry of uh, photography. So basically they also need to transmit data from the remote locations. And the best way it can be done is through a NAS network. So obviously, uh, last but not the least is the small office and the home office, which I highlighted, and the small and medium business houses. So with that environment in place, the NAS manufacturers like Asustore, they decided to create enclosures which, uh, which cover the three different segments of people. So basically, if you're looking at the small office, home office, or if you're looking at the home users, so they created the complete high capacity storage, which is the 3.5 inch uh, enclosures, then people who were interested in speed, but also in capacity. So there, there were some NAS enclosures created for uh, that is a combination hybrid combination of hard disk drives and SSDs. And lastly, for extremely high speed uh, uh, applications, particularly uh, more towards cloud and enterprise use, we have NAS enclosures, which is absolutely 100% flash driven. So these are the kind of platforms that Seagate currently has to approach with. So uh, to, uh, to be able to populate uh, these enclosures, because at the end of the day, you may have the enclosure, but at the end of the day, you need some place to store, some medium to store. And so I'm very happy to introduce the product portfolio. Uh, as you know, we uh, have very recently introduced the entire new lineup of uh, SATA and M.2 NVMe SSDs for Ironwolf. For those, uh, for those users who are interested in not only storage, but also high speed, and low latency. Then we have, of course, uh, hard drives. Uh, the 18 terabyte is the latest uh, evolved that we currently have. And of course, we have uh, the Iron Wolf uh, standard, which is uh, up all, all the way up to 12 terabytes. So uh, just, to, just to cover a little bit briefly on uh, the hard disk drives. So as you can see, the Iron Wolf Pro uh, is up to uh, 18 terabytes and, up, and the Iron Wolf standard is up to 12 terabytes. So any capacities that is beyond 12 terabyte, Ideally, it is recommended that you can move into the um, uh, Iron Wolf Pro series. So in terms of features, uh, as uh, is evident down below, is that we have one very unique feature, uh, absolutely exclusive for us, which is called as the uh, Agile Array. 
Now, what this agility really means is that as network attached storage means that there are multiple users connecting to a single server. So, uh, so obviously there may be some people wanting to access the data and there could be some people trying to save the data. And at the same time, the, the automatic background RAID operations are automatically working to save the data. So obviously these complex operations, which we don't want to go in here, but this complex operation that the ASUS store uh, enclosure is working on, they need the support of the hard drive uh, and that software, which is called as the Agile software is built into the Iron Wolf uh, Pro and Iron Wolf uh, standard drives. And this helps to have a seamless and absolutely uh, interruption free operation so that your uh, access of data is absolutely super fast and then there is no worry at all. So that is, that is what is Agile array. The second and most important is Obviously, when people are reading and writing uh, continuously um, for, a, for a prolonged period of time, the durability of the hard drive is very, very important. So in that case, uh, uh, we are happy to say that the, AT, the Iron Wolf Pro has got a read-write um, uh, ability of up to 300 terabytes per year, and the standard one has got up to 180 terabytes per year. So what this means is with a, with a three-year and a five-year warranty, you can probably have close to 1,000 terabytes for an Iron Wolf Pro, and probably up to the level of around uh, uh, 600 uh, to uh, 700 terabytes per uh, I mean, a total uh, ability to use the drives to that many times. The third, but uh, and the most important is particularly in ASUS store, uh, multi-bay environment starting from two bay all the way, maybe up to 24 bay. Um, I beg your pardon if I'm not very clear on the ASUS store lineup. So particularly when in a multi-bay environment, when all the hard drives are working together, there is a lot of heat and there's a lot of uh, vibration that keeps happening. And uh, uh, obviously, if the, if the drive is trying to shake or vibrate a lot, it creates a lot of challenge in terms of recording error-free data. So the RV sensors, which we call as the rotational vibration sensors, uh, is again an algorithm built into the Seagate hard drive. And they basically stabilize the hard drive when the vibration starts to go beyond a certain threshold. So this and why this is important is because once you have a steady platter recording at a 7,200 RPM or 5,600 RPM, depending on the on the uh, kind of product with the RV sensors, you are absolutely having an error free recording. And this gives you more uh, durable data and more authentic data. And the entire data that you're recording is absolutely perfect without errors. And last but not the least, we have what is called as the Iron Wolf Health Management which I will cover later on in the, in the slide. And this is a new a feature that we have uh, possibly incorporated, which is different from that of the competition. So as, uh, as you can see, I've covered all that in the previous slide. So just to, just to run through, it is tough because we have around 300 terabytes per year workload, and we have introduced a complimentary three-year data recovery service, which I will cover soon. And it has got the Agile array, uh, which means it keeps it ready and error-free. And last but not the least, we have capacity starting from one terabyte all the way up to 18 terabytes. And, uh, and the best part is uh, Seagate as a brand is highly is widely accepted among all the NAS uh, manufacturers. And we are super happy that in this particular uh, webinar, uh, we are well covered with all the ASUS store brands. And thank you for that. Uh, so just, just a summary of the products that we currently have. So in case, depending on your application, uh, if you are a small office and a home office, probably you can go for an Iron Wolf standard drive, which comes up to 12 terabytes. So you can use it in uh, ASUS store uh, enclosures starting from two bay all the way up to eight bay. Uh, and then we have a workload uh, limit up to 118, uh, 180 terabytes per year. So that gives you security up to close to 600 terabytes for the three year warranty period. And coming down on the Iron Wolf Pro, uh, we can use it all the way up to 24 bays in ASUS store um, enclosures. And it comes up to 18 terabytes and the rotational vibrator sensors is available across all capacities. And we have a warranty period of up to five years. Now, moving on, as, we are, as I mentioned that we are talking about uh, um, uh, SSDs because of the speed. So we have uh, a range of SSDs starting from the Iron Wolf Pro 125. And uh, the, the advantage of all this is a high cache ability, faster uh, speed access, and, and the daily writes per day is also uh, one uh, uh, drive writes per day, which is absolutely the best in best. And of course the capacities is up to four terabytes. 
And the last but not the least is the Iron Wolf 125 SSDs. And this is again a SATA based, similar features, and uh, uh, particularly in hybrid enclosures, this would be an excellent product. And last but not the least, the, uh, the choice to buy which SSD is ideal, as is evident over here, depending upon what is your capacity you're looking at, depending upon what is your interface or form factor you're looking at. And last but not the least, the warranty that is co covered is the same all across the board. And uh, more and more, uh, we, we find from the industry uh, uh, data that the M.2 uh, uh, SSDs is growing at a phenomenal rate. So probably the Iron Wolf 510 SSD will be a very interesting product for you to go for. Now, coming down to the Iron Wolf health management, uh, as, uh, as is, uh, is evident here on the slide, basically this is a software that is built into the Seagate hard drives. Now, what does this software do? Now, this software is like an artificial intelligence that is built into all the Iron Wolf hard drives. So the first action it does is prevent. Now, what prevent means is, for example, when data is getting read and write, and when the read when the read environment is happening parallelly in the background, there there is basically it's data, basically it's technology. So there are possibilities that during the streaming there could have been an error somewhere. So the prevention is an ability of that software inside Seagate by which it can prevent that error from further escalating. So prevention is one uh, one very key feature which prevents the data from going uh, bad. That is the first part. Now, what happens when the error is not being able to be recovered? I mean, not able to be, uh, how would I say, being able to be rectified? So we have a second feature in the software called as the intervention. Now, intervention is a built of multiple algorithms that are there into the hard drive. So what it, what it detects automatically, and by the way, this is all automatic. This is all happening at the background inside the hard drive. So it's tried to intervene and tries to rectify the data and have a smooth operation. And last but not the least is the recovery that in case, if both the prevention and the intervention don't work, then we have another insurance for all the end users, what we call as the data recovery service, which I will cover in the, uh, in the next slide. Now, I'm happy to say that we have worked very closely with Asustore and all these products that are mentioned on the screen, particularly for home use, home office use, medium business and enterprise, this is all covering the Iron Wolf Health Management. And thank you for that. Uh, well, uh, coming down to the Iron Wolf Health Management, you must have heard that the competition will probably say, what's so great about Iron Wolf Health Management of Seagate? We have got what is called as a smart. Now, uh, what I wanted to educate uh, you guys is the difference between smart and Iron, Iron Wolf Health Management is very critical. Now, what algorithm the smart uh, guys use in the competing brands is they only monitor on 20 drive parameters. But in Seagate's Iron Wolf Health Management, we monitor 2200 drive parameters. So literally every element of error that may happen, we have covered it up while the competition only covers a narrow 20 drive parameters. That is the first part. The secondly is what the smart feature in the competing brands do, they simply give a report that this data is passed or this data has failed. But in Iron, in the Seagate Iron Wolf Health Management, we not only are able to notify the user of a possible error, but also we intervene and try to avoid a failure. So this is much more smarter than the smart that the competition is using. And last but not the least is as the smart is using a very a small element of drive parameters. So their, their, uh, their ability to communicate with the IT manager is very limited compared to the Seagate Iron Wolf Health Management, wherein we have got an automated code reporting system to the Iron Wolf, uh, to, to the IT manager. So each code will be able to define where, what kind of error that is there. So this is a very, very helpful thing, particularly for the IT managers and big companies. And last but not the least is that we are able to completely take care of the drive, which our competing uh, smart software will not be able to do. Uh, last but not the least, the data recovery service is one thing which is absolutely exclusive to Seagate. No other competing brands has got this offer. Even if they have an offer, they do it to a third party uh, user, which is extremely dangerous. So say for example, if you have given your NAS drive to a bank and the bank has, got, has lost its data, they, can, you, they can, can, cannot possibly give that data to a third party, third party recovering agent. But in Seagate, it is 
in-house. So basically there's a contract between the Seagate and the end user, and we guarantee that the data will stay completely confidential. Now, why do we need the data recovery service? It's very simple, based on research, close to 25% of the users lose their data every year. And that's that is a big that's a big drop. Third is sometimes it happens due to human error that by mistake you have deleted the data. What do you do about it? And last but not the least is that the amount of uh, uh, frustration that the people have is humongous because data is an extremely important thing that uh, is uh, rather than the device, it's the data that's important. Uh, so what does this plan cover? Now, what the plan covers, it, it covers the hard drive failure, it covers the viruses that are there, it has any, if, it, if the driver's got any software issues, that is covered in the plan, and any other problems, that is not directly kind of, if you, say for example, if you drop it by accident, then obviously that cannot be covered, uh, or if it is while, while shipping, if the drive has been damaged, it cannot be covered, but only during the utility time, these are the things that is covered under this plan. Now, the, the plan coverage is depending on the product. And so if uh, usually the product, then usually the data rescue service comes with the, with the drive. So if you have purchased a drive that includes the uh, rescue data plan, you, there is a telephone number that is there on the slide that you can call. Otherwise, if you have purchased a data rescue service, which I'm very happy to say that data care is currently uh, the only uh, system integrator who is offering the data rescue service. And this is an excellent service that comes very cheap, particularly with the amount of cost that your data would, uh, would cost you if you lose it. And uh, with this, I conclude the presentation. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, Akash, through the participants, I'm all, and I'm all yours. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you for uh, such a great presentation. Um, if anybody has a question, we will uh, now do a quiz, as I promised. Uh, this is the quiz. Uh, uh, okay, this is a previous quiz. I'll just show you the quiz as usual. If you uh, if you answer quickly, you will be able to grab this uh, voucher. Okay, so the question I have is, uh, what is not true about the Seagate Arden drives? Is it that it's... Uh, it's not optimized for NAS, or does do we not have SDD and SSD products in Iron Wolf range, or um, do we not have a three-year rescue data service, which is optional, or uh, which means we will we may have to buy it, or are these drives not CMR drives? So okay, I see the chat already. Uh, oh okay, its responses are flying. Okay, Mr. Venkat said D. No, Mr. Ibrahim said. D. D, 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 okay. Um, okay, what is not true is actually C. Um, let me elaborate further. All the Iron Wolf is optimized for NAS, uh, that is true. Um, Iron Wolf products have SDD and SSD product line, that is also true. The three years rescue data service is actually included free of cost with every single Iron Wolf that you buy, right? From two terabyte to 16 terabyte. Any Iron Wolf or Iron Wolf Pro that you buy, you have got three years free rescue data service. It, without any cost to you, you will have the access to Seagate team. You will be able to ship the drive back to Seagate at no cost to you. They will recover the data, put it on an external hard drive, ship it back to you again at no cost to you. This is something very unique. Okay, so this is not optional. C was the correct answer. I will go through the uh, responses and see who answered it first um, because they have been so, so, so many responses that are still coming. Um, it will take me time to actually go to the top of the screen and see it. Um, so this concludes um, our webinar. But before we leave, I would like to also give you an exclusive offer for all those who participated in this. Um, we are offering a very special price on ISIS Store 3102T. Um, there are two bundles that we are offering at a very, very special price instead of 1,100. We are offering 825 on the discless version. And we have a bundle packet also where we are including two units of eight TB Iron Wolf drives. And instead of 2,700 regular price, we are offering it at 2,300. You will be able to buy this from us uh, within a month. So if you have any requirement, if you have any, um, any demo units uh, to, be, to be shown to the customer, or if you want it for your own office use or for your personal use, uh, please feel free to contact us. And if you have any questions, um, we can we can take the questions now. Uh, we have another five minutes uh, for question and answers. So if you have any questions, please uh, ask us in the chat box. We already have a question that I will I will take in a while. Uh, 
but if you have any questions please ask us okay one question we had from mr shabir was um he asked what is the maximum iops with the hard drive technology so uh, mr shabir i answered in the chat but i would like to um, also answer it here uh, the, uh, on the on the hard drive currently the iops are 180 to 200 iops um because the limitation is due to a single actuator but with the multi actuator drives coming out it will effectively be between 360 to um, 400 iops but those drives are still only being shipped to the data centers and they are not available to the channel yet uh, once they become available to the channel, you will have to also uh, check the compatibility uh, with, the, for example, if you want to integrate it with Azure Store, Azure Store firmware will have to be updated. And once they do that, they will update uh, the, the list of the dual actuator drives in the compatibility listing. And on those, you will have double the IOPS because you will have double the actuators. So I think that's all we have. There is no other question. In case uh, you have uh, any questions, please feel free to write to us on the email that's showing on your screen. and. Uh, Thank you everyone for participating. Thanks and have a good day.